So this video, I'm gonna be giving you guys a 10,000 foot overview of Timeleaf and how it actually works with Spring Boot. So Timeleaf is simply a server side templating engine. And if you don't know it, that means, let me explain to you how Timeleaf works with Spring Boot. So let's just say you are a user for this specific application. All of our code is here on the server. What's going to happen whenever you send a GET request is that your request will go to the server, it will interact with some type of code, and you will get some type of data from the database, and it will be in the form of this thing called a model. We will take this data that we got back from the database, we will inject it into our view, the HTML will be returned, and the user will be able to use this data that we actually got back from the database. But we can't just display the data all willy-nilly. We need to be able to display it in all types of pretty ways. And this is where this thing called Timeleaf Expressions comes in. We have to tell the computer what to do because the computer's not smart enough to actually put the data onto the HTML page in ways that humans like. So we have to display it in pretty ways and we do that with time leaf expressions we are going to inject these model uh, properties into our expressions and expressions always have these parts right here you have the actual expression part denoted by this th thing followed by a semicolon and text and it will be injected with the this actual model data so we could put title i guess we could we could do that and it also this th colon thingy magic or whatever you want to call it is actually uh, there's also other forms as well too. So we have this thing called an ID. So we could have container ID in here as well too. So we could be able to control our CSS, but it doesn't just stop there. We also have conditional logic and we also have for loops. You don't need to probably code this out. We're gonna be coding out plenty of examples later on, but just key, key point here is pay attention to what's going after the colon. And a lot of times you can just figure out what's going on. So we have conditional, and we also have down here, we have iteration. So we have all types of great tools that we can actually play with. And they look just like for loops. They look like just if else statements. So they're pretty much uh, going to explain themselves to you. But let's talk about some of the ones that are a little bit more innocuous. They, they're not as easily to be able to identify just visually. So we have the, these things called selection expressions. And all that selection expressions are used for are used in your forms so that you don't have to type out all of the actual properties. What do I mean by that? A selection expression is going to make it so that you don't have to type out user info dot first name and the other one would be user info dot last names. With selection expressions, we don't have to type out all of the actual field names. We can just have this star and we can shorten it down to a simpler expression. In this case would be the first name as opposed to typing out everything just like that. And that's all selection expressions are. The next is going to be message expressions. So message expressions, all that message expressions do is make it so that you can quickly get text out of your application properties file. If you wanted to, you could also create another properties file and you could call it message.properties file. And you would be able to pull this text and put it into your HTML outside of your application properties. And lastly, we have our link expressions, which pretty much explain themselves. You can have this th ref, and then you can go in here and type in the URL. And a more real world case of when we would actually use this would be when we want to inject actual user IDs, or we want to put actual data inside of our URL from our model. But let's go ahead and talk about something else that you should probably know about, and that is going to be fragments. So fragments are very important in software development, not just time leaf, because they allow you to quickly reuse your code with just a very simple one-liner. And how does this actually work? Well, the first thing is you have to actually have a fragment to create. Let's just say you found this actual piece of code right here to be very redundant, so you say, I'm going to I'm going to turn this div into a fragment. What you would do is you would add this th fragment 
separator. Give it a name if you're choosing. You can name it whatever name that you want to. And you've officially created a fragment, but you can't stop there because the rest of your HTML does not know where to put this reusable code. If you want to reuse your code, you have to tell Timely for it to put it. And that's where insert and replace comes to the rescue. So keep in mind that wherever you want to insert a fragment, you use insert or replace. We put the name in the second part. So this is the actual name of the fragment that we had. And then this is going to be the folder where your actual fragment resides at. There is a key difference between insert and replace, and they kind of just sound the way that they are. So let's just say you do an insert. Notice the difference between these two chunks of code right here. With the replace, there's no extra div tag, but with the insert, there's an extra div tag. The replace is going to replace the div or the HTML of what you use to declare it, while an insert won't. Hence why there's an extra div there. The insert is going to actually insert this div that you use to declare it by, but a replace will not do it. And it will actually take away the actual div or whatever HTML element you use to describe it. And that's the only difference between an insert and a and a replace. Anyways, that's going to be the video for today. Hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, smash that like button, smash that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.